let's talk Pegasus Turbo 2s. Hey guys, welcome back to the Run With Jay channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Nike Pegasus Turbo 2s. So this is actually my second pair of Pegasus Turbo 2s. Um, the first one, I have over 300 plus miles already. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about the shoe itself, as well as how it holds up after miles and miles of running. So if you guys are new to this channel, welcome. Please hit that like and subscribe button, as well as the bell for notifications. And let's get started. So quick disclosure before we begin, I'm not sponsored by Nike in any way. These shoes were all purchased with my own money and they were not given to me by anybody. So the Pegasus 2 Turbo uh, was released last year around June of 2019 and it's the second installment of the Nike Pegasus line. And unfortunately this shoe lo line looks like it's going to be phasing out due to the Tempo line that's coming out later this year that will be replacing it. So if you're a big fan of this shoe, you know, I would recommend going out there to pick up some of these before they are gone forever. And right now, you know, the shoe originally is placed at $180. However, there are tons of sales for different colorways which you can go pick up that are at a steep discount right now. So this is the Run Wild colorway that was released a while ago. I wasn't able to pick it up um, because they were sold out, but now I finally was able to get a pair for myself. So the shoe has about eight millimeter offset with a 16 millimeter forefoot and a 24 millimeter heel. Um, so this shoe is pretty light. It weighs at about 8.16 ounces for a size 10. Um, you know, compared to the last year's Pegasus 35 and other popular Nike brands, you can tell that this is probably one of the lightest shoes out there. Obviously not compared to the Nike Vaporfly, which is the, you know, the creme de la creme of the Nike shoes. Um, it's probably the lightest shoe at over about 7 ounces for size 10. But, you know, comparable to the other brand, um, the Nike shoes you got out there, you got the last year's version, which is just a little bit heavier at 8.4. And you have the Pegasus 36 and 35. 
uh, 7 as you can see which is about 10.05 ounces on the 37 and then you got the infinity run at 10.27 ounces at a size 10. so this shoe is fairly light compared to the other nike models that are out there that you might be looking at to shop so this shoe is made up of uh, four important components we have on the top the translucent upper mesh which is nice and light and it's shaved some weight from last year's model um, also we have then the Zoom X foam that goes below, below it so that's you know Nike's proprietary foam that gives you that bounce and the energy return that you need and it's what they use in the Nike Vaporflies and then below that you have the Nike React foam which is the new foam um, that Nike's you know uh, advertising it's on the new Pegasus 37 as well as the Infinity Run it's light durable and you know for this shoe it keeps it stable on under the zoom x and then you have the thin rubber outsole on the bottom that puts everything in place so in terms of durability this shoe is pretty good i would say you know the screen shoe that i've had uh, since the beginning of the launch it's been over 300 and plus miles now the only thing i've noticed is the ring outside the rubber is coming off a little bit but other than that the bottom the studs are still there on the sole you know everything's still good there's no holes or anything i mean i've ran through this in the trails so it's very durable still holding up the only thing you might notice is some of the creasing in the foam which is completely normal in fact you'll get creasing on the shoe even after one or two runs so some people might were complaining that this is a defect but actually that's just how it is with the foam and it's perfectly normal so even after 300 plus uh you know miles i would say this still looks good for the foam at least i mean you can see that um, with the creasing of the foam there's like black streak lines on it which is you know perfectly fine so the shoe is definitely durable and it's held up for me for 300 plus miles and i'm sure you know um, it'll do the same for anybody else so like i stated before the translucent upper is great in terms of weight it's very light it's breathable however it's not really meant for any kind of weather running so if you're running in rain um, if, or if the ground is wet your shoe will get soaked and it'll feel really heavy so it will doesn't feel really good when you're running and i've had a couple instances where i've run in this when it's completely wet and it just feels heavy on your feet and doesn't feel very comfortable and I've also run this on trails, although it is perfectly fine for that. It's really meant for the roads. So if you're running in trails, you just have to be careful of sharp objects like rocks or things sticking out because you'll definitely feel it as this is very soft bottom. So, you know, when I was running on my trails, I stepped on many rocks and I could definitely feel that it wearing on my shoes. So, you know, it would probably wear your shoe down a lot faster if you do that. But, you know, I recommend running on trail, I mean, roads, excuse me. Um, instead of running in trails or any you know back roads or things like that so so things that I like about the shoe one is definitely that it's very light I you know I feel like um, it's I don't even wear it sometimes although you know compared to the vapor fly this is a little bit heavier but it's still great because I do my fast and tempo runs on these and you know I hardly ever feel them so definitely the fat the weight factor is the reason why that I picked up the shoe um, I just hate clunky shoes and things uh, shoes that are too heavy so this is a, a perk a plus for me the weight um, I definitely like the upper it's very thin and they kind of shaved off a lot of the weight on there compared to last year's which was a little more filling um, and you, uh, however you know on the other side of that you'll lose some of the cushion and your feet doesn't feel like it's very stable in this shoe so although the translucent upper is great because it's lighter it does have some drawbacks as well also i love the zoom x foam that's used on the shoe it gives you that bounce you know kind of like if vapor flies if you guys ever use those and then you have the react so it's got like the best of both worlds with the zoom x and the react foam on there to give you that durability also that bounce that you're looking for so it, overall it's a great shoe it's like the sandwich of best of both worlds so people call this the faster pegasus <laughs> so there's a couple of things that i don't like about the shoe one is the tongue this neoprene material is not i'm not a big fan of um, every time i put my feet in there i'm gonna have to flatten it to make it you know more comfortable so it doesn't crease um, although it's super light i'm um, just not a big fan of it and this also causes me to lace down my shoes uh, harder which has caused tendonitis on my foot so that is you know something that's not i don't like about 
Um, I also, the shoe in the back does not have any cushions, so if you're prone to getting pain in your Achilles, you might be still feeling some of that. However, it's supposed to be tapered in a way where you're not supposed to feel any um, touching on your Achilles while running. Um, so this is something to look into. I've had heel slippage in this shoe as well because, you know, of the opening area in the back and with no cushion. Um, there is cushion on the sides of the shoe, which is good um, to keep your foot inside. But, you know, due to Nike's direction with this shoe, I guess creating a minimal effect, they took out a lot of the things in the shoe, like the upper padding and um, also that uh, the back doesn't have any padding as well in this version. So, you know, it's... Uh, Something that I don't like and some people might have any problems with Achilles or heel slippage. So I use this shoe mostly for my long runs and my tempo and interval runs. This shoe is good, uh, you know, for regular long distance runs or just any runs as well. But I feel like you really get the most out of the Zoom X foam and the bounce when you're going on faster paced runs. Um, so I use this, you know, for really quick, fast tempo uh, interval runs. I have done long distance runs on this as well as and it worked fine, but I just noticed, that, you know, you get more, uh, you feel the foam and, you know, get more of the bounce when you're going at faster paces. So even on the shoe itself, it says fast on it. So, you know, this is meant to be a shoe for quicker runs, but you can, you know, use it for slower or long distance runs as well. So this is a very popular shoe in the Nike lineup. Um, currently, it still retails for $180 in certain colorways, like the Nike Wild Run colorway that I just picked up. Um, however, there are steep discounts in other colorways that are uh, for this shoe as well. Since this shoe has been out for a while, there's actually tons of colors available for this shoe. So be sure to check that out if you're looking to pick up a pair. Um, since this will be phasing out later this year, this line, um, I would, you know, if you're a big fan of this shoe or you've ran in these before, I would pick up a pair at a discount in case, you know, you don't see them anymore in the future. And I'm sure they will be available in outlets as well. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope this video was informative and helping you decide if you would like to purchase this shoe or not. So if you guys have any comments, feedback, or questions, please feel free to leave them down below. And again, please hit that like, subscribe, and the bell button for notifications. So thank you guys again. Be safe out there, and I'll see you guys on the next run.